Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the iGP Sport BS1200 Smart Bike Headlight. The iGP Sport VS lineup of headlights combines smart features with modern elements. iGP Sport currently offers this in three variations. They have an 800 lumen all the way up to 1800 lumen to cover various riding scenarios. In this review, we're going to be looking at the VS1200, which offers bright 1200 lumen output at a very affordable price point. In terms of packaging, you can see very simple. You have a dual language packaging with a lot of specs on here. You have all the output modes, mounting and then a rundown of other features, as well as this nice glossy representation of the headlight itself. We'll go ahead and open this up, we'll go over the specs. So retail price on this is only $69.90, which is quite affordable. As the name implies, this is 1200 lumen output, so quite bright. You have a very cool top mounted Garmin mount, so you can mount this underneath your out front mount. This has a 5,000 milliamp internal battery, gives you up to 70 hour runtime if you use the eco flash mode. It has modern USB type C and can be even used as a power bank to charge other devices. And IGP Sport has a bunch of smart features like an ambient light sensor, motion sensor, as well as a fully customizable output mode using the companion IGP Sport app. As far as what comes with this, you can see we have the headlight we have a USB Type-C charging cable. We have this Garmin to GoPro adapter with the tools and the hardware to bolt it on. IGB Sport even includes an out front mount, which is pretty cool. Again, for only $70, you seem to get quite a few accessories. There's a nice plastic out front mount, dual sided. So I'd love to put this underneath using that adapter. Nice, simple cardboard construction here. Not a lot of wasted plastic. And then a little instruction manual that goes over, goes over the features in multiple languages. Now let's take a look at the weight of the light. So the light by itself is 155 grams. And the included out front mount, which again is plastic, we include the bolt and the little GoPro to Garmin adapter that comes, into, comes out to 62 grams. Visually, the iGP Sport VS1200 has a standard rectangular profile with a square cross-section and rounded corners. The body is constructed from an aluminum alloy, and you can see it's primarily black and silver. Majority of it is black, and they have a nice silver streak that runs down the side, around the back, and then down the other side, which helps break it up and give it a very premium appearance, which is impressive given the $70 price. The headlight has no exposed hardware, so you can see everything's nice and flush, except for just the mount. And then you have a nice thick rubber grommet that conceals the USB Type-C port on the back. And this even supports reverse charging. So you can charge other devices and use this as a power bank, which is a really nice feature. The whole light is IPX6 rated, which means it could be easily used in any type of weather condition without worrying about it. Branding on this is limited to IGP Sport printed on the side, the serial number, and then VS1200 printed on top. In terms of mounting, you can see it has a unique top located Garmin mount. So it's your standard Garmin mount with the two tabs that protrude out. You do a simple 90 degree rotation. So you can see with the out front mount, if I just do 90 degree rotation, locks into place. You'll notice it's mounted on the top, not on the bottom, which means this is really designed to go underneath your out front mount. And that means you can have a really sleek installation. So you can see we have a GoPro to Garmin adapter. We can use that with the included mount. And then you can see you can put this underneath your computer for a really clean installation. So you'll have your computer in front of you and the light hidden underneath it, which is really the way I recommend it. And because it's really designed to be mounted on the bottom of an out front mount, you can see the power button is on top, so it's more accessible. Other lights, when you flip them, the power button ends up being on the bottom. So you never really know your battery status and controlling them can be really awkward. But with this one, they specifically designed it to be bottom mounted. It is non-directional though, so the USB or the beam pattern on this is non-directional. So theoretically you can just flip this and put it on top on your handlebar, but then you'll see the power button is kind of hidden under there. So definitely less usable. Definitely recommend going with the undermount. IGB Sport includes this out front mount. It's a simple plastic construction, so it's a little bit thicker than your aluminum ones, but it has a single bolt design 
with this opening clasp design. So very easy to install. And if you don't have one, I recommend just using this or going to a metal version. And again, you put your computer on top and then use the adapter here to mount the light underneath it. In terms of the user interface, so single button. You don't have a little battery status checker like some other lights where you do a single click. Instead, you have to do a long hold to turn it on. Single press to cycle through modes. And with the latest firmware, IGP Sport is actually separated flash and steady mode. So you can see right now I'm in the steady mode. If I double tap, now I'm in the flash ones. In a single tap, we'll cycle through the flash options. Double tap takes me back to standard mode. And they've even added a triple tap, which is pretty unusual. So if I do one, two, three, you can see now I'm in SOS mode, which is kind of a cool feature. If you're ever really in an emergency, you could go SOS or use this for daytime riding. It does have mode memory. So you can see if I'm in the flash mode, do a double tap and then shut the light off. With the long hold and I do a long hold again, turn it on. It does remember which mode you're in. So it'll always turn back on to the same mode. There's also a couple cool features here. They've added a couple smart features. So there's an ambient light sensor here, which I believe is hidden right on the back. So if you enable it in the app, you can actually turn on intelligent mode, which will turn the light off during the day Turn it back on when you're in a darker situation. They have auto sleep and they even have a low mode if you're stationary. So kind of cool. So it does have a motion detector and the ambient light sensor. As far as the lens, that's pretty simple. It's just a single LED. This is what they call a total internal reflection. So a very thin design. And right on the inside, you have a single diffuser and that helps diffuse the light. You can see there's a little dimpled surface along there as well. But at the end of the day, you just have a standard cone. So you can see basic single cone, a little focused ring here, and then a couple artifacts with the outer edge of the reflector. It is non-directional. So again, I can flip this around and it doesn't really affect anything. It isn't a sharp beam cutoff like some other lights, but they have added some nice features. So you can see there's these little side cutouts. So when the light is on, you can actually see the light from the side, which is really important. A lot of manufacturers forget that. But with this, you have some additional visibility, which is great when you're doing urban riding. And you do have some shielding. So when you're riding above the light, you can see this extends over. So you don't see the light unless you're really in front of it. Now let's take a look at the output modes. There's three constant modes from the factory. You have high mode of 1200 lumens and a pretty long, nearly two hour runtime. Medium at 600 at four hours. And then low mode gives you eight hours, which is also the custom mode, and it's 300 lumen. There's also a high flash, which is 800 lumens and 30 hour runtime. And a lower powered one, which is 300 lumens and gives you 70 hours of runtime. As far as the beam shape here, you can see it's a standard comb beam with a pretty bright center spotlight. You can see there's not that much spread, so it really focuses it forward, which is nice. So if you're riding faster, you can see more down the road rather than around you. But there's a pretty big artifact. You can see that ring on the outer edge. And that's part of that headlight lens shape. It would have been nice to see a little bit more flood beam here, something like the Nog Blinder. As you can see, it's very focused, but if you do ride faster, it is convenient. Switching between modes is pretty simple, and the flash modes are actually fully separated. So you can see here, they're really distracting at night, so it's nice that you have to double click to access them. When you're just normally riding at night, you can just use the low, medium, high, unless you customize that custom mode which can actually turn into a flash mode. So we just left it as low, but you can adjust the output. Medium and high are more than bright enough. So you can see a nice big hot spot in the middle and 1200 lumens with nearly two hour runtime. Should be more than enough for most riders. So overall nice headlight. There isn't much anti-glare design here. You can see it's just a big cone beam. So you definitely want to tilt it downward to reduce the glare or run a little bit lower output modes if you're on a busy trail. Now let's take a look at the IGP Sport app. So with the VS1200, you can actually connect it to the standard IGPS app, the same one you use with all the computers. So under devices, you can see you can go add. And I've already added the 1200 in addition to the normal computers. If you click on the 1200, you have a very simple page. You can see an illustration of the headlight on top. The battery status is the only place you can really see it unless you have a computer that supports it. The firmware version, the current mode, and then again, the available time in the minutes, which is kind of nice. So you have a more accurate display. 
It's also a couple of bugs here already. This is a smaller company, so you can see it says taillight mode. This is actually headlight mode. And here's where you can slick, switch between the six selected ones. You have high, medium, custom, the high brightness, low brightness, and then standby, which is not available normally, but this puts it in kind of sleep mode. There also is the SOS mode, but it's not available through here. The cool thing about this one is you can actually do the custom mode. So if I go back, do that little right arrow. Now I can actually customize that third mode. You can switch between flash modes and then breath, which is really cool. So you can see this will actually go up and down in brightness. So if I increase it, you can see it'll just gradually go up and down. Kind of a cool effect, less distracting than flash mode. You can do normal flash mode. You can actually really customize it. So you can pick the cycle time, lighting time, and then the overall brightness. And then they have something listed as always bright, which is just constant mode. Which again, you can switch between the min and max. So 10% all the way to 100. It's not particularly useful unless you really want to customize it as the stock mode. Default modes are pretty nice. So I found the leaving it just in the normal lower mode made a lot more sense. You can also switch between the modes using the app directly without clicking the button on the actual light. There's also some intelligent modes, and this is what makes this light smart. So here you can actually enable the syncing. So these are all defaulted to be off. There's auto sleep. So you can see if I put it 30 seconds, I'm ready to wait. This will actually turn off. And then with the motion sensor, if I were to shake it, it would turn back on, which is kind of cool. There also is intelligent light sensing. So this will actually turn off during the day and then turn on at night. So it's kind of counterintuitive. You'd rather have daylight flash mode and then a constant mode at night, like a smart mode, but that's not available here. It's more just an on and off if you really want to save battery. And then there's also the stationary low brightness. So if you do have the motion sensing on, you can actually change the brightness. So this will go to a kind of battery save mode. So if you come to a stop for a while to the specified amount of wait time, it'll automatically switch the mode. And then low power mode, also just ensures you go to a lower setting when you're running out of battery to extend the runtime. So we're all pretty simple and you can finally do the firmware update. I highly recommend doing that as that does enable the separate modes. So double click to separate the constant and flash modes. Here we have quite an array of lights. On the channel, we've done a lot of magic shine lights. So here's the RN 1500. You can see very similar design. All these lights have the same style lithium ion battery on the inside, which really drives the form factor. You can see the RN1500 is a top mount design, while it's a bottom mount design. But you can see otherwise very similar. The cool thing about the RN1500 is they actually have these anodized colors, which is really nice. Magshine has a little bit more advanced beam with just a simple cutoff. So this little diffuser, and that'll help diffuse some of the light. So you can see there's a little bit more light underneath rather than just having a standard cone. Otherwise, very similar features. Nice thing about Magishine is you have a single button press to get the battery status. Well, this one does not have that, and you really have to go to the app to see something more detailed. This is backlit, so it should change color when you get lower, but it's not nearly as clear as the Magishine. Magishine also has bottom mount lights. One of their newer ones is the Evo 1300, so you can see a little bit wider form factor, and this one actually has a beam cutoff. It's not STVZO certified, but you'll notice it has a very distinct lens. So when you look at it straight, it actually has an anti-glare design. And when you put it down on the ground, you can see sharp beam cutoff rather than a standard cone. It's not quite as bright because of the beam design. And when you're going around corners, you can see it's a little bit harder to see around you. While this cone design is good if you're doing a lot of fast corners or mountain biking. You can also see the color is a little bit different. This is a brighter white while well, it's a little bit more neutral. But again, the cool thing about Magishine, you have the color indicator. So you can immediately see how much battery status you have. Same USB type C and a little bit wider form factor with this real anti-glare lens rather than a simple one. They also have the Evo 1700, which is even brighter. This has a very funky form factor, and you can see a very unique beam shape with that beam cutoff, and this GoPro mount on the top. But otherwise, the same features as Shine, same different colors, and simple user interface. I've also reviewed some other lights like the 
light skin Naka Road. So it's an aerodynamic one, quite expensive. But you can see it is top mount GoPro instead of using Garmin to GoPro adapter. It is STV ZO certified, so you can use this in Germany and other countries that require it. So really sharp beam cutoff, but not nearly as bright because of the STV ZO requirements. There's also stuff like the Trek Commuter Pro. This one actually can connect with a taillight, which is really cool. So you can connect it directly to a taillight and control it. Nice big side indicator. And you can see dual battery gauge rather than having to really guess what battery you have or check in the app. It's nice to have a multi-level one there. And you can see this one does have a beam cutoff, which again is a nice improvement over your standard cone, which has plenty of glare unless you turn it down. So it would have been nice to have a little bit more advanced lens, but this is quite affordable while the Trek is over $100. There's also other lights like the Phoenix, which does have a removable battery, which is kind of cool. So it's also 1200 lumens, but because they're a flashlight company, they actually have a fully removable cell. So pretty cool, not quite as much battery life as the 5000 milliamp in here, but you can change it on the Phoenix, which is something you can't do on the HEB Sport, which is integrated. And the other light I do want to mention is the NOG. Those are the blinder. It also has a simple LED design, so four of them. So the top ones are a little bit more focused, while the bottom ones are a little diffused. So you can see you have this nice big shiny spot rather than just having a sharp circle. The cool thing about NOG is they've actually solved the reversibility issue. So the mounting, rather than just forcing you to go to the top only, you can see with this, they actually have this tab design. So this whole thing comes off and then you can flip it. So kind of cool, while this one just has a top mount, this one you have a little bit more versatility, you can flip it, put it on top, or flip it and put it on the bottom. Now let's go to the pros and cons of the VS1200. What we like about it is you have a competitive price, at only $70, you get a lot of features here. Also you have a premium look with the silver accent and a pretty large internal battery, which gives you longer run times. It's also nice to see the flash mode separated from the constant mode, so you don't have to cycle through them when you're riding at night, which can be very distracting. The main negatives with this headlight is the fact you have a non-reversible mount. So if you were to flip it, you would end up having the button on the bottom and not accessible. Would have been nice if it was flippable with a simple clamp or a bolt-on design. Also, the beam pattern does have a pretty large ring artifact, which can be a little distracting while you're riding. And then the smart features lack a auto day and night mode. The ambient light sensors only use to turn it completely off during the day, which is a little bit counterintuitive. Taking everything into account would give you the light an 8.9 out of 10. It's a bright and affordable headlight. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com, as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.